Hello everyone, my name is Max Elchek and I am the First Shift Body Team Manager. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at the NBA process. Let's get into it. So here we are in the wood shop uh, looking at our NBA area. This is smack dab in between our rough sand and our finished sand for the body team. Uh, these guys are taking fully sanded bodies and fully sanded necks that have been matched up to orders. Uh, they are then going to take them and build them into guitars. So it's really where it comes to life and, and becomes a, a little bit closer to a usable instrument. All right, so here we have Jack. He is going to perform the first step in this NBA process, and that is cutting the heel to fit the neck pocket. It is something that he makes look pretty easy, but it really does take a lot of skill and precision to, to make sure that every, every spec that we have is, is nailed down to the thousandth. Uh, these neck pockets and heels are cut in the, mach the machines that are very, very accurate, but they're made out of wood, which is a very inconsistent material. So there's always a little bit of play. Each guitar is different and it really is down to Jack to make sure that it's a nice solid fit with no gaps. Uh, he's also going to be checking a couple specs here. Uh, first up is our neck angle. He uses a nice long straight edge there along the neck and a six inch ruler. And he's checking the height of that neck angle off of the bridge. And that's just going to give us an idea of, of where the, the neck is going to sit in relation to the body and whether or not he needs to take more off on the heel to adjust that angle. So you can see him kind of going back and forth here with that straight edge and the six inch ruler just to make sure that it's absolutely dialed. Uh, it really makes a big difference with the setup uh, of the guitar and bridge height and everything else kind of falls into place. So now we have this next jig here. This is our neck alignment jig. He's making sure that the neck is set up from left to right and making sure that our reveal is correct. So that is the height of the neck in the pocket there. So if everything checks out, which it does, he moves on to the next step. So here we're watching him score the, the heel. And that's just so that we get a nice uh, mechanical bond as they build this guitar. He's gonna score the heel and the inside of the neck pocket. Uh, a couple different woods here, mahogany and maple, and they're going to react to glue differently. So you need to make sure that the, that the glue can penetrate the maple and get a nice bond. So here, Jack's putting his initials in just to make sure that he has credit for the guitar. It, it, it lets us have accountability for any quality issues, but it really is also kind of that, that point of pride for a, a job well done. So once Jack is done cutting the heel here, Sam is going to pick up the next step. He is going to be building the guitar for us, gluing it up, and clamping it, making sure everything is set right. So the first step here, he double checks Jack's work, make sure he's got it all in line. These guys really do a good job, uh, and part of that is holding each one accountable. All three of them work as a really nice team here. All right, if it checks out, he moves on to the next step here, spreading glue inside the neck pocket. He's gonna have a nice even layer on the bottom, left and right side of the neck pocket, and some glue spread on the heel of the neck itself as well. So good coverage is really the, the, the critical aspect in this bond. Any air or any pockets just create an opportunity for moisture or movement or anything that can really damage the longevity of this joint here. We're looking for stability. That is number one. We don't want any movement and the best way that happens is by a nice mechanical bond with no opportunity for moisture or anything to penetrate that. So once he's got the neck seated with the glue in there, he's gonna come in and clean up any excess squeeze out. They try and do a good job of using just the right amount of glue, but there's always gonna be a little bit extra. Next up, once it's cleaned, he grabs some uh, clamps with some purpose-built adapters here to really make sure that we're distributing the pressure across the surfaces that we're gluing up here. So a big one on the back and a nice one across the, the, the heel in the pocket of the guitar. Always more glue to clean up too. It really goes a long way. That glue can play nightmares uh, on the staining crew. If any of that is left in the pores of the guitar, it's gonna affect how the stain looks. So it really is critical that it's nice and clean. All the pores are nice and open and ready for that stain. So all the guitars sit for 30 minutes here while the glue sets. Uh, you can see we've got a couple other clamps on there as well, just to make sure that it's a nice stable while it's waiting. When it's ready to go, Jack here is gonna pull it off unclamp it and do some final cleanup. But first, check that neck angle again. There's always opportunities for things to move around, especially when working here, so the more checks, the better. A 
little bit more glue clean up here. And that's gonna make our sanders lives easier. Believe it or not, that is a normal toothbrush. <laughs> Sometimes the simplest tools are the best. So we use uh, a UV light here. The, the glue that we use reacts in the light to, to be a nice bright neon white. So it makes it a lot easier to see. Uh, a lot of times that glue just kind of sits in with some of the lighter colored maple. So it, it, it's a little tough to pick out, but the light helps us out a lot. So Jack is handing off the guitar to Tim. Tim is one of our finished sanders and definitely one of the more experienced workers in the, the body team and in the wood shop here. He's checking for glue once again, and really that experience is both in, in his hands and in his eyes, right? So years of, of fundamentals of, of, of training, sanding, and working on product lets him correct any scratches, any shape issues, round over edges so that they're nice and comfortable to play, while also keeping an eye out for any quality issues. This is really one of the last chances before it moves to final check to, to fix some of the bigger shape issues or any problems that are found. So it's really important that it goes through experienced hands so they can catch those things and, and again, make the job of the next person in line just that much easier. As Tim finishes up with the guitar, he's gonna do a pre-QC check and really that's just another opportunity for him to find any issues. So he's gonna look at it in the light here and give it one last look over before Nick picks it up. Nick here is our final QC check. He's part of a, a, a two-man team that checks every single guitar that leaves the wood shop. So one of Nick's greatest tools are his bench lights here. They're set in very specific locations to cast light across the guitar just how he wants it. And he's gonna use that to look at the shadows as they roll across the guitar. Those shadows really tell the story of any inconsistencies. And again, we're looking for minor, minor scratches, because any of those scratches or swirls will show up when the guitar is stained. It needs to be very, very clean. So he's doing that last look over the area that Tim sanded on, making sure it's good to go. And he's gonna then progress to look over the entire guitar. He really manipulates the guitar in a way that allows him to use those lights to spot every nook and cranny, whether that's up on the headstock, down in the neck joint area, here we see him flipping the guitar over just to get it in the perfect orientation with these lights, really making sure he can see every bit of the wood. And we're just looking for clarity. The, the more clear that grain is, the, the better it'll take stain. You're never gonna truly sand every scratch out. It's a, a game of hiding it. And really the, the smaller the scratches and the more with the grain they are, the, the easier they are to hide, right? Nick's gonna sign it here and that is the final QC check. He's gonna put it on the rack with the rest of the core guitars here and roll it off to finish hall when they're all said and done. In the finish hall, the next step of this guitar's life is stain. It's gonna get some color that's gonna pop and look amazing. Mark Carroll's gonna take you through that process.